Hi, boys and girls. Today I'm here to read to you a book called Redwoods by Jason Chin. Um, as you can see, I chose the outside setting, so hopefully we don't hear any lawnmowers. This is a really great story. You're going to have to take um, a good look at the pictures because the pictures help tell the story, and you know I love that. So before the story even starts, we see a boy sitting on a bench in a subway. Um, also take note of the story that's sitting on the bench. It looks just like the cover. How cool is that, right? And then here's our title page. So he's opening the book and it's the title page of the story we're about to read. The Coast Redwoods are among the oldest trees in the world. Their ancestors lived about 165 million years ago during the Jurassic period. Look out the windows of this train. One tree can live for more than 2,000 years, which means there are trees alive today that first sprouted during the Roman Empire. Redwoods have shallow root systems that travel more than 100 feet from the tree. They help the tree stand and they need all that help because they can get to be the tallest living things on the planet. Redwoods regularly grow to be more than 200 feet tall. So if you look there's usually a little squirrel in some of these pictures. Again, notice here's the stairs, he's coming up, and then the setting is now exactly where he's reading about. A redwood trunk can be 29 feet in diameter at its base. That's so wide that a tunnel can be cut in it, big enough for a car to drive through. You can see there. Here's our little squirrel. Amazingly, such a tall tree stands from a seed about the size of a tomato seed. A one inch long cone that houses the seed falls to the ground and if the conditions are right, the tree will sprout. With enough light and water, a redwood sapling can grow fast, up to two feet per year. And here's a good example. Redwoods grow from other redwoods. When a tree falls or is cut down, new trees can sprout from the big round base. Check this out. Here's the trunk and we have three individual trees sprouting from that trunk. Um, those are called burls. Often several trees will grow from the burl on one stump. If you see a ring of redwoods in the forest, they probably all sprouted from the same stump. One reason that the redwoods are able to live for so long and grow to be so tall is that they are very good at defending themselves. Their wood contains a lot of tannin, a chemical that protects them from fungal infections and insect infestation. Redwoods are also very well suited to live through fire. Check out our scared squirrel here. If there is a fire, their extremely thick bark shields them from the heat just like the heat resistant tiles on the space shuttle. Their branches don't start until very high up, about 200 feet in some cases, which also helps protect them from fire since most forest fires can't reach their needles. Even if a fire penetrates a redwood spark, the tree can still live. In some cases, a huge portion of the center of the trunk has been burned out, but the tree keeps on growing. In many ways, fire actually helps redwoods by clearing out other plants that would otherwise compete for resources like water and soil. Here's our squirrel. And we have the squirrel running from the fire also there. Coast redwoods need a lot of water to grow as tall as they do. 
and the area in Northern California where they live is perfect. It's a rainforest. The air is cool and damp and the land is often covered in thick fog. You can see it here in the picture a little bit. It takes a long time for water to travel all the way from the roots to the top of the redwood and the fog helps the tree by preventing them from losing moisture to evaporation. You remember that word in science. In addition, the needles of the redwood can absorb moisture straight from the air. And you can see little um, drops of moisture on the needles here. Also, I want you to notice, you can see some ferns growing off of the tree here. We're gonna talk about that. In the summer, when there is much less rainfall, redwoods have an ingenious way of collecting water. They make their own rain. When the fog rolls in, it condenses, another word that we learned in science earlier this year, it condenses on the redwoods needles. And whatever moisture isn't absorbed, then falls to the ground to be soaked up by the tree's roots. Other plants that live at the base of the redwood tree use this artificial rain as well. So not only do the redwoods water themselves, they water all the plants around them. Here's our squirrel here. The branches of a redwood are called the crown or canopy and start very high up the trunk. To study redwood crowns, scientists have to climb into trees. And this is not easy because the trees are so tall. Researchers use a bow and arrow to launch the rope over the branches. When the rope is secure, they can pull themselves up. This is very dangerous work. When the needles fall off the redwood, they decay and turn to soil. And redwoods are so big that the soil often collects in the tree themselves. Soil that collects in the branches of the tree or the crevices of its trunk provide a home for other plants. Plants that grow on redwoods are called epiphytes. They often are found, often ones that are found are ferns. In one tree, researchers found a mass of ferns weighing more than 1,600 pounds. That's heavier than a full grown polar bear. Here's our squirrel, if you're looking. There he is and there he is there. So this fern weighs more than a polar bear and it's growing off of the redwood tree. All right, here's some more pictures of things growing off. Okay, here we go. Here's our squirrel. Look at all these different things growing off of a redwood tree. Ferns aren't the only plants that make their home in redwoods. Moss, fungi, bushes, and even trees grow in the redwood canopy. Researchers have found a wide variety of trees high above the ground, including hemlocks, spruces, firs, oaks, and California bays. In one redwood, researchers found the California bay tree going out of a knot hole over 300 feet from the ground. All right, take a good look at these pictures here. In addition to plant life, scientists have found many animals living in the redwood canopy including flying squirrels, beetles, earthworms, centipedes, spiders, salamanders, and yellow banana slugs. Some animals like red tree voles live their whole lives in the treetops and never see the ground. Look where the squirrel is this time on top of his helmet. Many birds also live in the tops of redwoods, including bald eagles, ospeys and woodpeckers, a, mar a marbled merlet, and the northern spotted owl live almost exclusively in the oldest redwood trees and are both endangered species. When a redwood is injured, the tree will often sprout a new trunk like this. That's like a miniature version of the tree itself. If a branch is damaged, a new trunk will grow straight up from the top of the damaged branch. Sometimes more than one new trunk will sprout. Researchers found one tree with more than 200 reiterated um, trunks in it 
there was a forest of redwoods growing atop of a single tree. Wow. Now we all want to go to California and check this out, don't we? The crown of the redwoods can be very complex. As the tree grows its main branches and the branches of its new trunk crisscross and run into each other, forming a maze of growth, the crown can become so dense from its interior, you can't see the ground or the sky. Researchers have gotten lost while exploring the crown. And here's, here's our squirrel. You can imagine getting lost in there. The largest of all the redwoods are a class of their own called the Titans. For a long time, the record holder of the tallest tree in the world was the stratosphere giant measuring a whopping 370 feet. Wow. But, and we know what that word but means, there's, there's a transition, something new is coming. But that record was broken in the summer of 2006 when researchers discovered the Hyperion, a giant coastal redwood rising 379.1 feet from the ground. And it is still growing. Wonder how tall it is now. Look at this squirrel now, showing off. That's six stories taller than the Statue of Liberty. Now look, he's gonna climb down the rope and look back where he is. He's back in the city, changing the setting. It's taller than the 30 story skyscraper. Wow. It's so tall that if it were introduced to a city skyline, it would fit right in, right? Fits right in. All right, now here we go. We have a page where there's no words, but we have some serious things happening. He's sitting down, he puts the book down next to him. He gets up to leave. <gasps> he left the book. Here comes the girl. You see her walking closer, closer, closer. She picks it up. What do you think's gonna happen next? You're probably right. Here she is on her journey, and there's our squirrel. You can see the park bench. All right, boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed that story. Um, definitely makes me want to visit California again at some point. I hope you're having a great day. I'll see you soon.